everyone. This is Mark Semedini from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I'm here with Dave Loper from Clear Center. And today we're going to cover the installation wizard. Specifically, we're going to go through the various steps that take you through the setup all the way into a full and complete install. Uh, things like the network modes, registration, naming of your system, and application installation options. So, without further ado, turn hey. over to you, Dave. Thanks, Mark. So we have um, so the screen you're looking at right now. This is what the login screen looks like for just a regular login to uh, ClearOS. But this is also the same screen that you'll uh, be presented with um, at the end of your installation. So there's a couple of ways that you've gotten here. Um, one is is that you've done a uh, that you had ClearOS preloaded uh, on a, on a system. It came as a you know from HPE with ClearOS already pre-installed and if you hooked up a monitor and a keyboard to it it would have given you a, an address that uh, would have said something like go to https colon slash slash 10.203.176.65 colon 81 uh, so you may see that screen or um, you may have done a manual install and you set some network settings up during that manual install and you can go and navigate to uh, that address in your browser. Just make sure it's HTTPS and port 81, which is the colon 81. Uh, a third uh, option is that uh, you maybe did a, a manual install and you, uh, you got to, or you did an install that came preloaded. You got to that uh, first screen and it didn't have an address. It said something like, you know, uh, WXYZ colon 81 and you actually went through the uh, network console session and you configured some IP addresses. And Once the system has an IP address, then you're ready to go for the installation. And um, you don't need to do anything more at the console. You get in your web browser and we're ready to go. So if you notice here, uh, this is a, um, a self-signed certificate. There's not really a, a, a good way to deploy a, a system with a certificate that's already you know defined or, or there for your organization so you're going to have to tolerate this self-signed certificate it's still secure in many ways as long as you can validate that you're actually talking to the machine that you're supposed to and there's not something in the middle so oftentimes we recommend that you directly connect to the the clear west server or you're at least on the same network segment where your risk of having somebody intercept um, and and uh, do something in the in the middle is uh, assured, but you're going to have this certificate until such time that you can put your own company certificate on it, or until such time that you create a level of trust. But um, anyway, we're going to log in as root. Root is the default username. If your system came pre-installed with ClearOS, then the password is password, and you're going to want to change that right away uh, because you don't want to have uh, root and password as your uh, login for for this box, especially if you start opening up services like SSH or others, your system will be compromised immediately. So make sure that at the end of the wizard you you change uh, your password. We cover that in another video. Um, so we're going to log in here, and this will give us the start of the installation wizard. So I've got LastPass asking if I want to remember that. I'm going to kick that away. Sorry about that. But um, here we have the just kind of an overview of what's going to happen. Uh, notice that there's some links here to user guides and install guides. These will help you if you need to kind of get down into the details. And so we're going to cover things kind of at a, at a high level. And um, we'll have other advanced videos in the future um, that talk about, you know, kind of the more advanced things that you might run into in the corner cases that might show up. So uh, it breaks it down into some several sections here. We're going to cover over network settings, as Mark mentioned. We're going to go through the registration and the naming of the system, which is the primary task and configuration. And then we'll talk a little bit about the marketplace, and then we'll be done. So we're going to click Next. The Next button is always here, and you need to hit it between different stages of the install. So the first thing that you need to do is decide on what your network mode is. Now, there's three primary modes for ClearOS, and this determines how the firewall is going to behave. Now, if you're doing ClearOS as a private server, and this is just going on a LAN, you don't need a firewall on the, on the server, then this is the, this is the mode that you want to do. 
if you're setting up um, ClearOS maybe as a web server or you're deploying it directly on the internet or, or even on a local LAN where you think security needs to be uh, a lot higher, you can create it as a private server. The firewall will come up in a block everything kind of a mode, except for a few exceptions like web config itself, and you will need to open up ports manually in order to access them. Also in public server mode, um, some of the servers services will look at um, public facing services a little bit different and some services like Samba for example won't want to like broadcast out in that mode so um, it really does change the behavior of not just the firewall but certain apps they're specifically written to you know only present their ports if they are in a uh, safe area the last one is gateway mode which is kind of a combination of the two. So in gateway mode, um, you have a public server side of the server, which is your outside facing side, and then you have kind of a private server mode on the inside so that you can access those services. But in gateway mode, also you can use it to uh, you know, put your clients behind that. In gateway mode, anything that's on the LAN will be uh, natted out to the outside. Anything on a hot LAN will be natted to the outside, but won't be able to access the LAN. And in gateway mode, you can support um, the DMZ um, part of the firewall, which actually lets you use public addresses with uh, ClearOS as a firewall between public um, servers and the rest of the internet so you you kind of have that and you can mix and match so so question for you so these are the three modes which one's most commonly used most commonly is gateway mode um, the the apps that are available uh, and that really function um, some of them are really dependent upon these modes and by and large if you're if you're playing with uh, clear OS or you're testing it out and you want to look at all the variety of apps uh, gateway mode is the one that you want to do because it's going to give you the best versatility to see the gateway type apps some of those gateway apps don't even uh, work you know well if you're not in gateway mode um, they don't you know they just they just won't work because you don't have traffic going over the ClearOS firewall. So that's by, far, by and far the most popular. And that's the most common one too because that's the one that people will use in their small offices, home offices, uh, branch offices, and, and, and those types of deployments. It's, it's really kind of the, uh, that's the Swiss Army kind of mode. It's got a little bit of everything in it. So we're gonna, we're gonna choose that one and then hit next. So here I have uh, my network adapters, and you can see the different roles that we have for them. So in this uh, in this mode, the uh, the we have an external interface, and that's what we're accessing it on. So we're actually accessing ClearOS from the outside of the interface. Port eighty one is open during the, the installation process. If you want to secure your box even further after the installation is done and you have other mechanisms for management from the outside, you should close that port. But, uh, you know, just for security reasons and to keep things tight. But uh, for the purposes of the install, that port is open and we're accessing it from the outside. Now, external is a very important concept here. External in the, in the terms of ClearOS means the interface that's facing the internet. So if you are in a standalone mode or in a private server mode, realize that your external, you're still going to have an external interface. And even if it's a private server mode, you know, you're going to have an external interface. That doesn't mean external, you know, cheese out in the wind, I'm on the, on the internet. What that means is that's the, that's the internet facing address. So external interfaces have uh, gateways that can be defined. Um, here we're using DHCP on external, but I'm going to go and look at this LAN uh, interface to show you kind of the different options. And by the way, you can set up, if you have like multiple NICs, more than two, and you have multiple internet service providers, you can have more than one external interface under ClearOS. You will need to install the multi-WAN app to do that, but you can set multiple external interfaces. So here's this other interface that isn't really configured. And you can see the different modes that I have here. LAN is the, the typical for the, the, the second NIC that's not external. And there's hot LAN. And the difference between these is LAN 
land to land traffic, land to hot land traffic, land traffic can originate and go anywhere uh, that they want. That's the default rule. Um, you're going to want to put like gateway dot management or some other egress filter in order to uh, control that. But by default, ClearOS will trust that land traffic. Hot land traffic is treated with suspicion, meaning that traffic can go out to the internet, but it is not um, allowed to access uh, resources on the land. External, again, that would be your internet facing address. And as you can see, when I have it external, I can set a gateway, but when I have it on LAN, I can't. And that's because, again, external is internet facing, LAN is, is you know, local facing internet. And DMZ, of course, that's the one where you set it up, it's local facing, yet it's local facing to public um, IP addresses. So these would be firewall addresses in a demilitarized zone. The typical install here is LAN. And I'm going to choose LAN here. I'm going to say static. I'm going to give it a static address of 192.168.100.1. And I'm going to tell it to enable the DHCP server right off the bat. So I hit update. And it will make that configuration change and then take us back to the page that we were just on, which is where you can see kind of the overall view of your interfaces. All right, so we're going to hit next and configure the rest of the network things. These next couple tests are pretty easy. Um, we've got some DNS. So these I got through DHCP, and our DNS lookup succeeded. If you try to hit the next button before this goes green, it's going to stop you. Um, so you, you're not going to be able to do that. I'm going to hit next now. It's green, and so we're, we're going to go. All right, we're done with the network. And now we're into the registration. So this is... This is kind of a, a, a critical uh, decision that you're going to want to to make, and maybe even consider about beforehand. Um, it is uh, one that kind of defines the way that your machine is going to act, and it's possible for you to change versions midstream, but it's fairly technical to do. Um, by far, it's easier to downgrade from business edition into, you know, other types of. Uh, uh, you know, the community edition or, or other editions, just because when you're talking about the way that updates apply, it's possible for community to get an update that business edition never sees. For example, if an update comes in on community that doesn't pass the community's muster and they reject it and say, you know, this was, you know, a package that presented this error, this bug, the business edition may never see it. And so there's not a real effective upgrade path from community to business although it is possible. If you have questions about that, you'll want to contact Clear Center for support and they can help you make a transition between versions. But by and large, you want to make this decision early on. Community is a free uh, version, but again, you're going to get the first round of updates. For home and, and business edition, those are paid and you're going to get quality tested updates that um, have gone through both the QA process that the community gets and through the, com the community's QA process. And so they have, there's a, a, a lot less risk uh, concerning those. What's, um, the, what's the main difference between home and business? That's a very good question. One of the biggest differences between home and business is just the availability of apps in the marketplace. So there are certain apps that are business case only that don't show up in Home Edition. And Home Edition additionally has apps that aren't available for the business. For example, and there are some apps that are available in both, but are priced more for the home uh, home market, uh, and you know, as, as opposed to the business. So, does that mean that a business should use the home version? I wouldn't recommend it because what you, you know, where there may be some savings on a particular app. Most of those apps don't have the same type of quality delivery. For example, some home uh, some apps that are delivered for home. Uh, only come in at a weekly or monthly schedule where um, updates for business can happen you know at a much faster rate like daily updates and things like that so there's a lot of high quality um, you know apps with the business plus there's a wider selection of things that are for business and there's just a you know more home centric type apps that are available for home edition now if you install the business edition and you really really want a home app you can you can still get it. It just may not show up for you in the marketplace. 
if it's a free app, free apps you can always get from command line, no matter what version you're in, even if it's precluding you from, from that. So uh, the, the marketplace, however, is very much tailored to the types of scenarios that those three different installations uh, produce. So we're going to choose uh, the business edition. What's interesting here is you'll see that as you select the different versions, your interface will change color. This is important so that if you have different versions that you're supporting, you can actually see that color change and you know that you're on the business edition if it's orange. So when we are presented this at this point, one of the things that you've mentioned before is that if you select business, you get 30 days to evaluate that's true. Um, in fact, all of the versions that you select, no matter what version you select, even the community edition, for the first 30 days, it's going to act as though it is community in the marketplace, but um, business edition as far as updates, because you still have um, 30 days in order to upgrade safely from the community edition to, to the business edition. That's great for people who want to use it as a trial, um, but don't want it to, you know, time out like a trial, right? They, they want to use it on a, like a trial basis, but they still have an inkling that they're going to keep it. They just don't know whether or not they want to pay for the support and the apps that they can get with business or whether they're satisfied with the community edition. So you can, there's two different types of ways to evaluate. One is you can evaluate the particular version that you want to evaluate, like business or home, or you can start with community edition as long as you, within the first 30 days, um, uh, choose to upgrade to business edition, and you'll be given an opportunity to do that in this web interface. So now, for the purposes of this demonstration, what I've done is I've already gone to Clear Center's site, and I created an account, and I purchased a license under that account. And so when I go to do the installation here, it's going to be really, really fast for me. Uh, when I hit next here, we're going to go into the registration part. Now this part is really important that you can actually talk to the internet to complete this step of the wizard. So this is where your registration is going to go and, and, and happen. So um, I have my account here, there's a demo. And as soon as I uh, put in my uh, password here, it's going to let me do uh, an install here or an upgrade. Now what's, what's neat about ClearOS is you can actually take a license from a different server through this installation process. If I had a different server, I could choose upgrade reinstall and pull that license from an old server that this is replacing or even from a server that may be active and live. It will actually just yank that license away from it and install it on, on this version. The other server will then just start acting as though it has an expired license. But this is a really neat way for you to, to transfer your, your licenses or to do a reinstall if you've pre previously installed the system. Now, if they were new and they, they had to create their name, they'd have to create their name and their password and then they would have to enter in more information. That's right. You can create an account here at the bottom and do that um, part already. Or you can go and you know go to uh, clear, uh, clearos.com or clearcenter.com and create an account um, at either of those sites and be able to uh, enter it in here. If you don't have an account, you can do it right here within the wizard. That's not a problem either. Um, when I choose upgrade and reinstall, for example, it's going to show me the list of servers that I, I have on this account. And this, you know, if I chose one of these and proceeded, it would actually yank the license from those. But I have all of these uh, actually in, uh, in, in somewhat production, even though they say demo. These are actually being demonstrated uh, right now, and so I don't want to touch them. But I did create a, I did uh, register a new license, so I'm going to go over here to new install, and it's going to look up the subscription list. So this is a different behavior here. Now, if I don't have a license already purchased, I have several options here. One is I could um, sign up for a 30-day gold, silver, or bronze um, uh, evaluation. Um, or I could go and purchase a subscri subscri subscription right from uh, this uh, portal. 
I've already purchased a license and it's running uh, silver and I can see right here the very start of the, the first couple characters of the serial number. If I select this um, license here then uh, I'll be able to start to see more about it, right? I can actually see the full uh, serial number here off to the right hand side and its expiration date and I can get all of the information I want about that license after having selected it here on this side. So this is the license I want to go with. Now the system name here, it's not important from a technical standpoint, it's important from an organizational standpoint. This is the name of the system that is going to show up in the service delivery network. So if you've got a lot of different um, servers and you're managing subscriptions or you're managing subscriptions for your clients if you're a managed service provider, um, then you're going to be able to see these system names um, in because of what it says here in system name. So it's good to have something that is descriptive. Oftentimes people will you know, talk about a location or a particular client or a particular department when they uh, have this service. So I'm going to call this LV test. And here we're going to choose our environment. So this is just um, kind of some informational stuff that allows us to kind of uh, make sure that we've got good um, service for the subscription. So when it comes to being able to service the account or being able to get um, special uh, pricing, for example, for education, nonprofit, and government, that helps us there. It also helps us uh, if you purchase a subscription that has a you know a higher kind of uh, support spend and you you know what kind of account your your box is going to have and what kind of uh, support personnel sales engineering personnel would would help to service your account so I'm going to choose multi premise biz, premise business and I'm going to say register system now maybe it's important to point out here while this is working this is similar to like the Apple, iTunes, and Android stores so that once you enter your information, then that information can be accessed later on if you're purchasing something, right? Like an app or something like that, that then it, it hits your payment information and, and you don't have to think about entering it again. It's, it's already there. Yeah, there are there are mechanisms for payments that tie into your account, and you can you can uh, put those in in your service delivery network portal. And, you know, if you're working with us, you know, through POs, or you're working uh, with us on a type of a certain terms or credit type of situation, that that information is act, is absolutely important to you know being able to purchase apps easily out of the marketplace and and managing that. And in many ways, you can actually um, do a lot of your purchasing either within ClearOS or even outside of ClearOS. And then what will happen is in the marketplace, you'll just see an item there. It'll have a price and it'll be crossed out because you've already purchased it through another means. So it'll come back and give us the information in gray. It'll issue you a, a, you a serial number and a host key for your uh, system. Now, this page can be accessed in an installed system, and this is useful for tracking down your very specific, unique um, server information in the uh, service delivery network portal. So I'm going to hit next here, and it's going to finish out by uh, running some updates. So now, is, is that information accessible through the portal in the future? That's right. You can access you can access that information in the portal. You can uh, do things like, you know, uh, if you're a partner, you can, uh, you know, move, for example, the a license or a, a specific machine license from, you know, one client to the other. Um, you know, you can purchase it under your own account and then uh, assign it to one of your clients, for example, which is a, you know, is a, it's a great way to, you know, run a, uh, you know, a managed service provider business because. You know, you're applying your, your discounts, uh, you know, in, in your purchase process and then assigning it out to your client when you invoice them directly. So that lets you uh, be able to, you know, run, run your business, add your value that you are going to do and create, uh, you know, your, your, your unique product. Because what you're, what you're providing them isn't, you know, just ClearOS, right? You're providing them with your services 
your installation costs, uh, you know, customization that you may be doing. So here you can see there's quite a bit of packages that I need to update, so I'm going to get started right with that as we talk about some other things. So this update process, updates occur automatically. Is there a way to shut them off? And if so, how do you do that? Yeah, after the installation is done, you can, you can shut them off. Um, for purposes of the install, though, there are specific updates that we, we have to push in order for the um, in order for this wizard to actually be uh, provide the best experience. So up until now, all of the code that's in there is, is fairly static. We don't change very much of that, that code. But right now we're doing updates that actually can affect the experience that is happening in the wizard. And the reason why we need to do that is because there are different elements to the marketplace, which is very dynamic and changing. It's almost, you know, it's a full app all by itself, the marketplace, its own app. And so it'll have significant updates that, you know, change the look and feel, the availability, the search functions, those types of things. And so this, this is doing that now. But later on, once the installation is finished, you can turn off updates or turn them back on to automatically update using the, uh, the cloud under the cloud, you'll see the updates icon there, and you can control that behavior there. Is there any reason to be concerned about turning the updates off? Um, typically, users won't turn the updates off, um, and I know that seems kind of weird. A lot of the times, you know, people, uh, administrators are in the habit of, you know, of turning off updates because they're worried that some update will will break, you know, their system, and. The, I mean, that's part of the reason why we encourage uh, people that are using this for business to, to get a business subscription, even if it's a self-support business uh, subscription, because there's a lot of value in having the community who is using ClearOS for free and, uh, you know, and running the updates. They are the ones that are helping to qualify the updates as being really uh, useful for the business users. So in a business user's case, you can turn off updates, but oftentimes you don't need to. It's it's amazing to me how little support requests we get when we do, you know, uh, service pack updates or things like that, how very little uh, business customers are affected by the updates that are coming down the pipe, because largely those issues have been resolved in the, in the prior week, or if there's a particular update that, you know, wasn't good, it just isn't, it isn't pushed on the business users or the home users. So yeah, the big part here is the, the download, and, and then you'll notice, if you notice, there's a difference in the size of the number of things that are updating versus the download. So there's 99 things that got downloaded and 161 update items. That's because some updates have uh, multiple packages installed in them. So it actually creates a, a process where it, it downloads the, the packages, explodes them, it does the install, and then it will go and uh, verify and, and then clean up after the install. The bar to watch here is the overall progress. Um, some people are confused by the current progress. Um, that current progress bar is only useful for very, very large packages. What you'll see as it's going and installing is, you know, it'll, it'll be at the very end because a lot of the packages are really, really small, and it's already... By the time it's reporting it, it's already finished. On a very large package, you'll see that current progress bar just kind of whip all the way back and then move across. But it's the overall progress bar that you really want to watch here if you're if you're looking for a, kind of a key indicator of how well it it works. So, so in the pre-installation process, we we covered in previous screencasts the fact that you have an eight second timeout window and so theoretically with the pre-install process if you just plugged it in it could in a matter of seconds boot you into the installation wizard that we have just gone through that's true um, so like in a completely headless environment if you had uh, you know ways of observing what the DHCP address would be on the ClearOS system or if you plug into on a pre-installed system the last interface you can get into webconfig and you know if you if you went into the last interface on webconfig on a pre-install you're going to admin it from 172.22.22.1 and that address so you just put in https colon slash slash 
172.22.22.1 colon 81 and you can start this this wizard process without ever even hooking up a monitor to a pre-installed like a microserver or, or other pre-installed uh, server that uh, that you have uh, ClearOS on. So as you get more and more familiar with this about how much time is does it take to go through the whole process on the installation wizard? Um, it depends on the speed. There's two two main factors that that um, that uh, dictate how long the installation process takes. Number one is um, there is a a significant amount of disk writes that can happen in the uh, installation wizard for a couple reasons. You may be doing software updates. You also may be doing ap application installations through through the process of the wizard, but. Um, and the other thing that um, affects it is how close are you? How close is your installation media to what is current? So if I'm if I put in an older ClearOS um, installation CD like a 7. Uh, 7.1 or 7.2, for example, I can actually install from there and get all the way updated to this version from that installation and then from that installation media. But it's going to take a little longer because as we update uh, packages, if you have a brand new install of ClearOS just after it's been released, this whole software updates um, section is very, very short. And that's similar to other systems. Um, and here we're done, so I'm going to hit next. But with the installation, you, uh, you want to make sure that you, you give yourself enough time to do, to do the updates and... Uh, that you get through that process. It's important not to skip those updates because sometimes, you know, we're fixing things like you know zero-day type events or or items that uh, you know really you want to get to that updates process. Uh, you know, especially if your machine's already being plugged into the network. So here I'm going to put in clearOS. Lan. So with the naming that's going on here. Um, the domain name that's listed here is somewhat important to um, how you're going to deploy this box. If you're going to put this on an Active Directory environment, you're going to want to match that domain name with the domain that this is going on for the Active Directory environment. If this is going to be a standalone directory or a slave, um, you know, you're going to want to figure out what that domain name is. Um, if you are... Um, if your if your domain name strategy already incorporates like a, a fully qualified domain name like a .com or a .edu, it's safe to put that on here um, as long as you make sure that you you've got really good um, uh, DNS settings and you've got really good um, host name host settings for your server when you're done. Um, the server by default will act as a caching DNS server. So it's important that you work well with your your DNS paradigm in here and also your directory paradigm. It seems like a, such a trivial field to input, but it actually affects ClearOS at multiple levels. So it's important to, to choose it um, choose it well. And can you change it? Yes, you can change it later on. It's just easier if you do it right the first time because then it does, you know, it, it can affect a lot of different subsystems. So I'm choosing clearOS.lan. Uh, and that way I don't have to worry about external DNS. Here it's going to suggest a name, and it's going to suggest the same name for the external, for the internet host name and the regular host name. Now, there's a reason why there's two different things here, and, and, it, and it goes back to if your DNS strategy includes like using .lan on the inside and then .com on the outside, you may want to be able to have some sort of split horizon going on here. So if you remember, I called this box LV test, and I actually want to make sure that that actually matches here. And if you notice here, I use .lan for my host name because that may you know correlate with my Active Directory settings, and I'm using .com on the outside because that may correlate with if I want to you know put a web server on here. And then I hit next. Now date and time. Um, this is one of the few places in the wizard where you can actually hit a button other than next and it'll take you to the next step. Um, you can choose your time zone. Currently uh, we are in Pacific time so I'm going to choose something in uh, California area where we have here. 
Should we have uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco? What do we got? Los Angeles. All right, synchronize automatically. Uh, what this will do is this will set your ClearOS server to synchronize off of the ClearSD and time servers. That's uh, something that you can change as an advanced setting uh, later. For those that are using Active Directory, we really recommend that you set it up for your Active Directory environment that you have NTP time servers somewhere on your domain. Um, the reason why that's important is because um, while being having the right time on ClearOS is, is good and important, it's actually more important that it's the same as your Active Directory. So if your Active Directory time is off, it's better that it's off together rather than being accurate here and inaccurate on Active Directory. It's, that, it's better that it's inaccurate on both because they have to talk when they talk to each other with thing, with protocols like Kerberos. They need to be able to coordinate based on uh, the time of uh, when those uh, certificates and um, tickets get transacted. So here I'm going to hit update. It'll actually update and advance me in the wizard. Um, this is this is one of the this step can be your last step or it can be just the start of the next step and for us this is going to be the last step because we we actually discuss some of these other things in uh, different videos especially by function and by category um, by function and by category are really good for people who are just starting with ClearOS these will give you a kind of a guided way to say okay um, Oh, these are my different apps that I have that are kind of in the directory category. These are my apps that are in the mail category. It kind of put, organizes the marketplace into kind of functional groups and and says, okay, you know, if you're doing this type of uh, if you're doing this type of install here, your kind of choices. If you're doing this type of install, here is some other choices. And it's a way for you to kind of uh, shop through those apps. Now, once you're familiar with ClearOS and you have a list of apps, or if you've got a um, kind of a specific deployment model, you can create a quick, quick select file and here you can actually upload that file and it'll just install those apps that you want for that particular uh, quick select file paradigm, right? So, you know, maybe you are a business that deploys mail server after mail server after mail server and on these you want to deploy a certain selection of mail apps for anti-spam, antivirus and things like that. Having registered the box, um, and if you purchase the licenses in the portal, those quick select files can even be used to install paid apps. So it is a very fast way to get uh, your deployment done. Um, but if you just want to use the marketplace, if that's what you're most familiar with, and you don't need these other tools, you can hit uh, skip wizard. And what's important here is that you have to select mix to finish it out. And we're done. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dave. So we've covered quite a bit here in the installation wizard, uh, the network modes. We've covered uh, lots of things on the registration and selecting uh, the proper um, product that you want installed. And then we've uh, covered naming the system and, and the application install options that are available to you. I think that the, the you know, key thing to note, I've, I've had a lot of questions on this, uh, is that you know the three editions, it's not three different operating systems. No. It's just one. Yeah. It's how you choose to have things applied after you lay it down. Yes. It, it, it's ClearOS is ClearOS. The differences between the different versions are, um, you know, they have everything to do with the way that updates are applied, the way that you get support. You know, with community, you're going to get, you know, you're going to want to use the forums heavily for uh, getting support and asking questions um, for, you know, the... Uh, the, the business version you're going to want to use, you know, you can use both the forums and you can use the, uh, you know, create some tickets and, and uh, get some support questions answered. You know, we even have services for uh, new people that are using ClearOS that if they want to get some training or they want to get some special uh, customization time, one of the things that we really like to do on our support is make sure that users have kind of a, an experience where they're not just having the problem solved for them, but we help to walk them through. Our goal is to make everybody um, happy and pleased with the way that ClearOS works and make it so that they uh, feel comfortable about deploying it and that if they go through a, a, a deployment exercise then and they need our help that on, on subsequent times they'll either need significantly less help 
or they they'll have mastered it with their you know with their first deployment. So we really encourage people to to try it out. And one of the beautiful things about the licensing model is you can try it out with you know a platinum license and get the support that you need, and you know also get some training up ahead of time. And then you know even after the first year of the subscription, maybe you're really quick at you know uh, learning these types of things and you know you can always go with a different subscription in the business model that maybe has less support or a per incident type support you know after you feel really really comfortable and that doesn't change the version of, of clear os it just changes the support paradigm and as a partner this is a really great model because um, once you're uh, you know adept at, at using clear os you're the one that now is providing support. So we are, we're only charging you where we're providing value. And as you become more adept at ClearOS, we're not providing as much value on the support. You're providing value to your customer on the support. And so that's why you should still charge that same rate for the premium support, but you're the one providing the premium support and then only coming to us when you, you, know, you really, really have a, a big problem. And then you can do it as per incident support, or there's other terms that we can do with different partners, um, you know, depending on on your situation. So just call us and and find out more about that if you're if you're interested in being a partner, but and and using those types of support, or if you're an individual user. Again, we have lots of resources for figuring out ClearOS. These video series is a is a great way to learn, as well as you know the documentation that we have online, the community forums and you know the, the support channels that we have available. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Dave. Uh, this has been another screencast on Clear OS, and uh, we'll be back with more in the future. Thanks. Thank you.